So let's look at the algorithm. Simplified DES takes 8 bits of plain text in and 8 bits of ciphertext come out and has a 10-bit key. It's, diff it's longer than the, the plain text block just to make it the, the steps in the algorithm work correctly. And it does some operations with the plain text and gets some intermediate output and then it repeats all of those operations again. So we say it goes through two rounds. Real desk goes through 16 rounds. It repeats 16 times. We start with a key and we generate some what we call sub keys or round keys. That is, we'll generate some keys that we'll use in different phases in the encryption. So there's a key generation algorithm. There's an encryption algorithm, which we'll go through. The decryption algorithm is essentially the same as encryption, but we go backwards. All right, we'll see that. So what we'll do, we'll go through key generation, use an example, and then encryption to see the different operations used. This tries to capture those three algorithms all at once. In the middle are the steps used to generate keys from our original user chosen key. That is, the user chooses a 10-bit key. Then they apply some steps, which we'll go through what they are. There's P10, Shift, P8, Shift, P8. The output of those two steps are two other keys which we call two sub-keys or two round keys, K1 and K2 in the diagram. Why do we generate two sub-keys? Because we said the encryption involves two rounds, two, two phases of we'll do something, then repeat it, and we'll use a different sub-key in each round. Real desk does similar. It generates 16 sub-keys. Every round it uses a different sub-key. But you start just with one original key. To encrypt, we take 8 bits of plain text in, we do some operations, IP, F of K using key 1, a swap, the same F of K using key 2, and some last operation, we get ciphertext. To decrypt, we start with the ciphertext and we do the same operations as encrypt almost. Encrypt, we start with this first IP operation. We'll explain what IP stands for shortly. To decrypt, we do the same. We apply the same function. We apply the same swap here, the same function again, and the inverse operation, and we get plain text. If you look closely, the blocks for encrypt and decrypt are the same. IP, F of K, swap, F of K, the inverse IP. The only difference is that we use K1 and K2 in a different order. For encrypt, we use K1 then K2. To decrypt, we first use K2 and then K1, where those values are the same. Let's go through it with an example. We'll, use, we'll refer to these slides as we go through the operation, so I'll flick back through them. The example we're going to go through is this one. That is, we're going to take those eight bits of plain text. The user chooses the key, which is a 10-bit value. I just chose a random key here. And we're going to encrypt that plain text. And hopefully, uh, at the end of the example, we'll end up with those eight bits of ciphertext. That's what we'll try and do. I'm going to write it down. We'll go through each step. You can write it down. But if you look, I hope I included at the end of your at the end of the slides, a printout of the example. Maybe I'll have a look. Because it's sometimes we, it's easy to make a mistake in writing down the bits. On page 95, you'll see the, the example we go through. The first thing we do, before we do any encrypting, 
we have to generate the sub keys or the round keys. We start with our original key, our 10 bit value, and we're going to from that generate two other keys and then use them in the encryption and decryption. So let's do the key generation steps first. So we start with the user chosen key. We start with what the key will denote as K and the value that we chose, those 10 bits, hey, we chose them randomly. 1, 0 and just to uh, make it easier to see the, the bits, I'll have a little bit of spacing. So that, that's the key that the user chooses. It's the same one on the slides, I hope. Yes. Okay, 10 bit value. And we need to generate two sub keys from that. And the way that we do that is using these operations P10, Shift, P8, Shift, P8. So we need to explain what they are. Or in more detail, shown here. So this is the key generation algorithm. We take 10 bits in and the way that the uh, arrows are marked, they show the number of bits we'll do in each, we'll pass between each step. We apply an operation called P10. P stands for permutation. In this, We do a permutation of those bits. Permutation is another word for transposition or rearrange. So what P10 means we take 10 bits in and then we mix them up. That's We do a permutation. And that way that we mix them up is defined and fixed. We always mix them according to the same rules. So P10 is actually defined. We'll see it on the other slides. It says move this bit to this position, this second bit to this position. So when you see a P, later we'll see P8. It's also a permutation. Remember from classical ciphers, substitutions and permutations. LS is left shift. So in binary we can shift the bits left. LS1 is do a left shift by one position. Take your bits, shift them to the left, where the leftmost bit becomes the rightmost bit. It wraps around. So like in hardware we can do a left shift on our bits. But the left shift takes five bits in and produces five bits out. So in fact, what we do is the output of P10, we split into two halves. P8 is a permutation. The shape of this box means that we're going to take 10 bits in and produce eight bits out. All right, it's going to throw away two of the bits, but rearrange the rest. Left shift two is do a left shift by two positions to the left. Take our five bits, move them to the left. So left shift is a permutation as well. P10 and P8, P, the two P8s are permutations. Let's go through them. So we're just mixing up the bits. P10, I have to jump back between the slides, is defined here. So it's defined in the algorithm, it's fixed, it never changes. The attacker knows what it is. The way to read it, we have 10 bits that come in. We label them. We can think the first bit, the second, up to the tenth bit that come in, in order. What comes out? The first bit moves to this position. The third bit of the input becomes the first bit on the output. The tenth bit on the input moves to the sixth position. That's all that it's defining here. So we take 10 bits in and we mix them up. How do we mix them? According to this permutation. So let's do that on our 10 bits. We've got 10 bits coming in. In this case, we'll, we'll make it clear. We'll say that let's label them. 1, 2, 3. So there are our 10 bits that come in. When we apply the permutation P10, 
using the key as input, P10, it's going to produce bits that come out and from that slide, the third bit on input is going to move to the first position. The third bit on input moves to the first position, so that is a bit one will be the first bit in the output. The fifth bit moves to the second position. We see the five here means the fifth bit from input becomes the second bit that comes out. And the fifth bit was a zero. Zero comes out here. And we keep doing that for the, the rest. What's the next one? Two, is it? Bit two becomes the third one, which was a zero. So we're just mixing up these bits. Bit seven. which was also a zero. Bit four. We will only draw this once. We will not do it for all the permutations, but just to highlight the approach. Bit four was a zero. Three, five, two, seven, four, and then the tenth, ten, one, nine, eight, six. Bit 10, 9, bit 1 from all over here, gets a bit messy, 8 and 6. Bit 10 was a 0, bit 9 was a 1, bit 1 was a one, bit eight is a zero, and bit six is a zero. Please check that I'm, when I make a mistake, let me know. What we're doing is mixing those first ten bits up. Defined manner, defined by P. Same way that the rail fence cipher or the rows column cipher mixed up our letters. The rail fence that we wrote them in three, three rows, for example, and read off, it just rearranges the, or permutates the bits. Uh, yeah? So, um, so a different combination is that, right? For each and operation. This is just one. No. P, P10 is fixed. So P10 is defined as part of, in this case, simplified desk, and the same in real desk, there's a P, I can't remember the number, but there's a, a permutation which is defined and always used this way. So the, whenever we take these 10 bits in, we'll always, in the first step, get these 10 bits. We'll always mix them this way. So we see that's very simple. Yeah. And you may question, well, is that secure? All right, we're just mixing up, and the attacker knows how we mix them up. So very simple operation. But we need to question, is it secure? Well, we'll see on its own is not secure because the attacker can, uh, if they know the output, they know the permutation, they can easily find the input. They can go backwards. But when we combine it later with some other operations, the substitutions, we'll see that the final output is considered secure because the attacker cannot go backwards. So this is the idea of Combine simple operations. Yep. I switched them, did I? One and nine. Right. Okay. One comes before nine. Right. Okay. Correct. I put nine before one, but I was lucky in that the they both bit ones, all right? So, good. Find my mistakes. 
we get these 10 bits, we do the next phase of the key generation, which is we split it into two halves, the left half and the right half, and in each half, we'll have five bits, do a left shift by one position on each half. Left shift, just rotate the, the bits, wrap around where necessary. That is now we consider it in two halves, two five bit inputs. We'll do a left shift by one position on each half. Left shift just means that the, the second bit becomes the first bit. The third bit, the second bit, and the first bit on input will wrap around and become the last bit. So note that we do it just on those five bits, not on all ten. And then we do a left shift on the second half. So we move the bits to the left, so it'll be one, one, zero, zero, that's these four bits, and the first zero will end up at the, the right hand side. So now we have uh, two five bit outputs. What's next? Join those two 5-bit values, pass them into P8. P8 is another permutation. So we're just rearranging the bits. Left shift is also a permutation. What is P8? I'll go in the right direction. Sorry, wrong way. P8 is defined here. It's actually select and permutate. That is, we start with 10 bits in, 1 through to 10. Bits 1 and 2 are discarded. We just take the last 8 bits and rearrange them according to this fixed definition of P8. So let's do P8 on those 10 bits. You do P8 and tell me the answer. The first two bits are going to be discarded and the last eight bits are going to be rearranged. And that the sixth bit, then the third bit, then the seventh bit will come first. Six, three, and seven. And if you keep going, 4, 8, 5, 10, 9. Bit 4, 8. Bit 5 is a 1. And 10 and 9 are both zeros. That is the output of P8. And importantly, that is sub-key K1, or the round key K1. It's going to be used in round one of our encryption algorithm. So that's the, the value of K1. Let's keep going. So we just did P8, and the output of P8 is K1. But what we do to get K2 is we take the previous inputs to P8, do a left shift by two positions, and then do P8 to get K2. So let's quickly do that. So we'll keep drawing here. We take this five values and do a left shift by two positions. So we're going to continue with these five and do a left shift by two, and that's easy. This one will move to the middle position. Left shift by one, two positions. And similar, we'll do a left shift by two positions on the right five bits. And we have three zeros and the two ones will end up at the end. 
and then take those 10 bits and do P8 again. The first two bits will be discarded. We rearrange the last eight bits and see what you get. P8 six three seven four eight five ten nine bit six bit three bit seven and four bit eight five and the last two bits ten and nine and that is K two. All we've done is taken our 10-bit user chosen key and rearranged it according to some fixed algorithm to get two sub keys. Not so hard. That was the easy part. And note that the operations we did were all permutations or all transpositions. There were no substitutions there. We always just took the same bits in and moved them around. Left shift is a, is a permutation, P8 and P10 are permutations. We're going to use K1 and K2 in both the encryption and they are used also in the decryption. So if you receive ciphertext and you need to decrypt, if you have the same key, you'll generate the same two subkeys, K1 and K2. So we'll use it together. So let's do an encryption using our plain text from the example. And let's have a look at the encryption algorithm. Here's the details. We've got 10 minutes to finish our encryption. Well, we'll get started. But uh, as an overview, we start with 8 bits of plain text. We do an initial permutation. IP means initial permutation. So again, it's a permutation. It's fixed. Then this dark gray box is denoted f of k. So together we say that's some function. We take the 8 bits in and produce 8 bits output. This is what we call our round function. This is one round of our algorithm. And the input to that round will be k1. When we finish that round, we swap the halves, sw, swap, or switch. That is, we have two halves of, of bits and we'll swap them and then we do the same round function in the, the second grey box that's here. So exactly the same inside the grey boxes so they're the same functions here but we in the sa second round we use K2. When that's finished we do the inverse initial permutation. In, initial permutation is defined, the inverse we'll see what that is, so you'll see what it is and then we get 8 bits of ciphertext out. So what we'll do in the example is we will get to, we'll go through the round function once, we'll get to here and then I'll leave it to you to do the round function the second time. Take 8 bits in, an initial permutation and then we split the 8 bits into two halves. We'll take the right half and then apply these more operations on that right half. EP, XOR and others. Let's try. We'll use K1 and K2 during this. Our plain text, I'll just denote as P, the data that the user wants to encrypt, we've chosen some values. Eight bits of plain text, 
we do an initial permutation and like P8 and P10 that is also defined where is it here it is initial permutation just a, a permutation where the second bit becomes the first the sixth bit becomes the second and so on rearrange those bits Two six three one bit two bit six bit three and bit one and then four eight five seven bit four eight five and seven The initial permutation is done before the, the main function and the opposite is done at the end just before we get the ciphertext. In, in real desk, similar, there's an initial permutation, you do 16 rounds and then you finish with an inverse initial permutation. We split it into two halves, so we'll note that right, we'll talk about the left half and the right half. We will not use the left half yet. We will take the right half and do some operations on that. What do we do? The right half, the right four bits, so the, the line through it with the four means we've got four bits here. We apply these steps. EP, expand and permutate. Four bits in, eight bits out. So we're going to duplicate the bits, but also a rearrangement at the same time. Expand and permutate. We take four bits in, one, two, three, four, and what comes out, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, one. So each bit is duplicated on the output of EP. Four, one, two, three. No, we're working on the right four bits, one, zero, zero, one. Four, one, two, three, bit four, bit one, two and three, four, one, two, three. And with those same four bits on the right half, two, three, four, one. Bit two. Three, four, and one. Bit one. This is actually the, the start of our function. So here was the start of that grey box where we do f that function using k one as input. After the expand and permutate, we've got eight bits. We XOR with the key. Eight bits, exclusive OR with K1. K1 we generated in the previous algorithm. So we'll write down K1 and do an XOR. And here's our first different operation. Key generation used permutate, left shift, which is also a permutate. Expand and permutate is a permutate. It's a rearrangement of bits. XOR is a substitution. All right, we're not just rearranging the bits. We're replacing bits with other potential bits. Okay, so this is our first substitution, exclusive OR here. So XOR, our value with K1. So if we remember K1 from before, K1 was 1010 zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, and we XOR those values. Exclusive OR, what do you get? Remember your exclusive OR. 
Okay. If they are the same, you get zero. If the bits are different, you get one. They are the same, we get zero. Same, different, different, same, same, different, different, different. We get our eight bits out. And then we split that again into two four bit values. So that was a substitution. Well, how do we know? Well, it's definitely not a permutation because the input were these eight bits, were four ones and four zeros. The output has five ones and three zeros. So we didn't end up with the same bits just mixed up. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It was some replacement of, of bits there. So that was a substitution operation. And the next operation is also a substitution, and we use S boxes. In the same way that the permutations were defined, we defined, we defined using a special technique a way to replace some bits with other bits to a substitution. And these are a key part in, in the real desk design and even in other uh, ciphers. What we do, we start, consider the first four bits, 0, 1, 1, 0. I write it again over here. We and it, let's look at the slide where it's defined, the S boxes. So where we're up to, we just did the XOR. We've got four bits on the left, four bits on the right. The four bits on the left are going to be fed into S box S0. The four bits on, on the right are fed into S box S1. We're going to power on through for the next 10 minutes and finish this example and then we'll take a break after that. Let's do the S boxes. S0 and it's defined on this slide. We have four bits in. Think bit 1, 2, 3, 4. The S boxes, S0 and S1 are matrices and they are defined. All right, so 4 by 4 matrices, they are fixed. Everyone knows what the values are. And the way that we use them is that the first and the last bit of the input determines the row of the matrix, and the second and third bit determine the column of the matrix. We look up that element, and that's the output. Let's consider with our example the row, the first and last bit, 0, 0. Row equals zero, zero. Column, the second and third bits, one, one. Or you can think row in decimal zero, column three. If we index our matrix starting at zero, so we have zero, one, two, three rows, zero, one, two, three columns, then we look up the element which is in row zero, column three. Row zero, zero in binary, column one in binary. Look it up in the matrix of S1. What do you get as output? Oh, sorry, S0, S0. Row 0, column 3, S0, row 0, the top row, column 3, the last column, output 1, 0 this value. Note that we index starting at 0. Row 0, 1, 2, 3, column 0, 1, 2, 3, row 0, column 3, output 1, 0. What? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, our, okay, so our input here we have 0, 1, 1, 0. The, the, 
the rule is that yes, the first and last bit tell us it's which row number. Row zero zero in binary or in decimal row zero. So I convert. And the column is the middle two bits, one one. Or if I convert to decimal, one one is three. Okay, so depends on how you want to think about it, in binary or decimal. So in in decimal, that will be 0 and 3. Right, we just convert. So row 0, column 3, which is the fourth column. We start index at 0. The output will be this element. And it's fixed. It's always that value for that element, 1, 0. Do it for S1. With S1, you take the other four bits. You take these four bits, apply into S1, the different matrix, and see what you get. With the S1, we take the input is 0, 1, 1, 1, row 0, 1. The first and last bit, column, second and third bit, 1, 1, or in decimal, 1 and 3. Look it up in S1. Row 1, column 3. Row 1, which is the second column, column 3, the last column, 1, 1, comes out, this element. We've not dis discussed the design of them yet. We'll come back when we talk about this. Why is it like this? We have four bits. We're at this point. We pass into P4. Rearrange those four bits. P4 is defined. 2, 4, 3, 1. Rearrange those four bits. We have four bits, one, two, three, four, rearrange, where we have two, four, three, one, bit two, four, three, and one. So we treat those four bits together, we get zero, one, one, one. XOR with the left half from the original input. Where'd it go? That is, all of this started with these four bits. We haven't done anything with these four bits, so let's use them now. Take these and XOR with our four bits that we have currently. That's the left half. This was the right half expanded and permutated here. One, sorry. One, one, zero, one. Sorry, one, yeah, one, zero, one, zero. XOR. Exclusive OR, one, one, zero, one. Almost there. Grab the right half. Grab this half, the original right half. One, zero, zero, one.
Now we have two 4-bit values. Swap them. Swap the sides. Actually, this is a swap operation, which is quite simple. These four bits will become the last four bits, and these four bits become the first four. That was actually... And then I think we've done all operations necessary. Let's summarize what we did, then we'll have a break. We started with the initial permutation. We took the right four bits, expand and permutate XOR with the key K1, Use the two S boxes, S0 and S1. We get four bits out. Apply permutation P4. XOR that with the original left half. We get four bits out. Take the original right half. And we're actually finished the round now. We have eight bits that come out of the round. Before we do the next round, we swap those two halves. And then we repeat it all again, starting from the expand and permutate. You see what's inside the grey box is the same. We do the same steps, but we'll use K2. We'll get 8 bits out. We'll do the inverse initial permutation and get ciphertext. So we got to this point. To finish, what you do is now you start the set the round function using K2. When you finish that round function, Then you'll do the inverse initial permutation and you'll end up with 8 bits, the ciphertext and the 8 bits you should get just by luck the two halves are the same. And to give you a hint so we can have a break. The inverse initial permutation is your homework. Find it. What is it? And to give you a hint, the end of that function, the input, is this. the end of function, the round function using K2, you'll get these 8 bits, then you'll do the inverse initial permutation and then you'll end up with a ciphertext. So your homework, if you don't understand the steps, you can do them for round 2, which is exactly the same as round 1, and then do the inverse initial permutation and we get ciphertext.